You guys, it's time we talked about the popular VT Riedel shot. You guys have been asking for a review on this product. Now, back in December, I got this in one of my Korean advent calendars. I had never heard of it. I was excited. I saw, ooh, Sika. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of Centella. Sounded great. Just looking at the packaging as I took it out of the box. Didn't really spend much time reading the ingredient list. Set it aside. Only a few days later did I realize what this actually is, and we're gonna talk about it in this video. If you haven't heard, this is a really trendy product right now, all over Instagram. I've gotten a lot of requests, please review it. Now, what it contains that I didn't realize upon unboxing it for the first time, is hydrolyzed sponge. Spicules, what are spicules? Spicules are these little particles that are part of sponges. If you look at them microscopically, they look like some sort of medieval torture device. They come in a variety of different sizes, shapes, and they're really, really pointy. Spicules are an area of interest for drug delivery because as you can imagine, they're very sharp. Maybe they can help enhance penetration of medications. When we're trying to get things into the skin, it can be quite challenging. I always tell you guys this, it's not about the product ingredients, it's about the formulation overall. And a key aspect of formulating skincare products is formulating them in such a way that not only are the ingredients stable and at a, an effective concentration range, but can they actually get into your skin? Your skin is designed as a barrier, a waxy barrier, and it really actively works to limit penetration of things into the skin. That's great until you actually want something to get into the skin, and then you've gotta really put your brain to work to figure out what you're gonna do. And there are a variety of different strategies, micro needle dart patches. I've even tried some of these out on this channel, specifically from the Dollar Tree, and they're these little pointy, barbs on a patch and in theory they are impregnated with the active ingredient and those little barbs claw their way into the outermost dead layer, the protective layer, layer of the skin which is called the stratum corneum and release the active ingredient. So you get in theory more effective penetration. Well it turns out, at least my understanding, those micro dart patches they're actually kind of challenging to get the ingredients onto the little micro darts. So there's that. Now in dermatology we utilize microneedling to enhance delivery. We also utilize a variety of energy-based devices to enhance delivery of certain medications into the skin. Recently, I did some videos reacting to Brian Johnson's exotic anti-aging pursuits, and we talk about Tixel, Tixel as a approach to enhancing penetration of things. You don't have to be a genius to figure out just by looking at these things under a microscope that they're probably quite abrasive. Abrasive things become of interest for the act of exfoliating the skin, smoothing the skin surface, which if you read reviews of this product online, People often talk about how they've noticed that their skin feels a lot smoother, they really like that, and that is one of the many draws to this product. The abrasive properties of these spicules may help to smooth out the skin surface. As I said, you've got this outermost differentiated dead layer called the stratum corneum, and with age, you know, the kind of turnover and natural shedding of that can slow down a bit. You can get a buildup of dry, rough, skin, dead skin cells on the skin surface, lead to uneven skin texture, so some type of exfoliant, whether it be a chemical or a mechanical, is intended to remove that, smooth it away. Ultimately, that helps improve not only skin smoothness in terms of running your fingers over the surface of your skin, but also the overall luminosity and brightness. What about the actual science of using these, though? It's all well and good until somebody gets hurt. Is there any research to show that spicules actually are effective. Truthfully, it's quite in its infancy. There's a small study done in porcine skin, pig skin, showing that these little spicules, they do appear to pierce the skin, and in theory, just acting almost like a little hypodermic needle could help with enhanced delivery of active ingredients. As far as clinical research on actual people, really limited. There is one small study that examined EGF, a growth factor, either EGF alone or EGF loaded onto spicules. What they found after four weeks of using either of these, the subjects 
regardless of which one they were using, EGF alone or EGF loaded onto spicules, had an improvement in the appearance of crow's feet out to eight weeks. However, the spicule group had even greater improvement. So that's really exciting on first impression, right? First glance, it suggests, oh, they're getting better penetration of EGF into the skin, so it must be working better. You're assuming EGF applied to the skin does anything anyway, uh, other than just create a little bit of local fluid retention and swelling. So while these people had an improvement in the appearance of wrinkles, it's very suspicious that they actually had a true change in skin quality, other than just local swelling from applying these things to the skin. And, you know, either improved moisture retention, hydrating up skin's outermost layer, smoothing things out, or just actual swelling in the skin from enhanced penetration of something that might actually be irritating on a low level. To what extent that's going to be maintained long-term, I'm highly doubtful. Overall, the study didn't suggest that there were any adverse effects, but eight weeks is a pretty short window of time to be looking at things. So I've got serious reservations about spicules and skincare. First of all, of course, anything that is abrasive to the skin has the potential to be irritating. That goes without saying. Um, whether it be the St. Ives walnut scrub that you're gonna be using, or these little tiny SpongeBob SquarePants particles. <laughs> now, you can make that argument for anything, but not only is it abrasive, but you also, in theory, have enhanced penetration of things, which can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. It can be a good thing in that maybe you're getting better delivery of the ingredient, but sometimes enhanced penetration comes with greater risk of irritancy. So be aware of that. But you know, that is what it is. A lot of people will use this and say, I don't have any problem with it. It's working well for me. It's not causing me irritation. But here is my other reservation. What exactly is the fate of these silica calcium particles? These are things that are not broken down in your skin. What exactly is happening to them? So in theory, you know, they pierce your outer dead layer and eventually that gets shed away. So they probably are just exfoliated out. You can imagine that these piercing the skin, they have the potential to embed in the skin. And this is a problem because it can create what's called a foreign body reaction, which is known to happen with silica embedded into the skin. Silica is found in glass, it's found in sand. People who get shards of glass, or sand embedded into their skin, they can develop a foreign body reaction to that silica. It's called a silica granuloma. Basically the immune system is like, what exactly is this? The body can't quite break it down, so it walls it off and you get this bump, an inflammatory reaction. And here's the thing with foreign body granulomas from silica, foreign body granuloma formation in general. It's not a, oh, I just started using this and all of a sudden I have a bump, no. It's something that can take a really long time to show up, to appear, to manifest. We're talking, in some cases, 60 years. And the problem with foreign body granulomas is they are really, really challenging to get rid of. It's, it's a really challenging thing to treat, a foreign body granuloma. That's one of my major reservations with this. So once I saw this had spicules in it, it was an immediate no for me. I was not interested in using it. And I know this drives people up the walls when people review products that they haven't actually tried. I'm not trying that. I'm not gonna use spicules on my skin. Um, that being said, um, in my ignorance as to what was actually in it, of course, if you watch me unbox it, I did in fact open it up and smear it on my skin. So yes, I have technically applied it to my skin, but I haven't actively used it in my skincare routine. I haven't put it on my face. I have no interest in doing that. But I have gotten many requests. Please review this popular product. These are my thoughts on the ingredient, why I'm not interested in using it. So be aware of that. A lot of people hype it up, but I'm really, I'm really nervous about spicules. Call me, call me paranoid, 
but I would just like to see more long-term safety data with these. You might say, well, you use those micro needle dart patches. How is that any different? Those dissolve. What else is in this product? A lot of really good ingredients, which is why I was so excited when I first opened it up and glanced over the ingredient list. It has things that I love. Um, it has niacinamide, which is great for redness, hyperpigmentation. It's great for the moisture barrier. It's anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant. You know, it's, it's widely abundant in many skincare products. So it's not necessarily novel. There are plenty of things out there with niacinamide. It also has a variety of amino acids, which are a part of skin's outermost protective layer. They help with moisture retention. They are natural moisturizing factors that help to hydrate the skin. Uh, it has glutamic acid, aspartic acid, leucine, alanine, lysine, arginine, tyrosine, and it has compounds from centella, like madacasoside. These compounds are anti-inflammatory and they also help reduce oxidative stress, which is a big deal when it comes to damage to your skin from not just UV rays, which you should be protecting yourself from with sunscreen and sun protective clothing, avoiding peak sun exposure hours, but also pollution, infrared radiation, visible light, all of these things, um, you know, they do create a lot of oxidative stress. And with age, our skin's ability to handle that declines. And also a lot of that contributes to certain underlying skin problems. The, the flares of those skin problems, the severity, namely like acne and atopic dermatitis, their severity is linked and, you know, tend to be more severe, I'll say, for people who live in areas with a lot of pollution, for example. So we know that and, you know, topical antioxidants in theory are really beneficial. And a lot of what limits topical antioxidant efficacy is not just their stability and the nuance of the right antioxidant at the right time, but also getting them into the skin. I always harp on this when it comes to vitamin C serums, like, yeah, um, great, but how is it getting into the skin? And this Serum, in theory, will enhance penetration of those, but it comes with my major reservation. I don't have any proof that this is gonna happen, okay? So if you've been using this, don't, don't freak out. I, I've never, you know, this is a relatively new territory. All in all, it's not something that is that commonly utilized in a widespread fashion. This particular product, VT, the Riedel shot, the one I got is um, the 100. 95,000 Sika Riedel. So I'm assuming that means um, how many are in there or, you know, kind of their relative concentration. It says hardness 100. Now there are other levels of this, I suppose, that you can get. There's like a 500, which sounds really intense. I think there's a 50, there's a 700. Regardless of the number, I'm still worried about the possibility of foreign body reactions. With these, you, you don't really feel them rubbing on your skin. You can feel a little bit of warmth, a little bit of tingling sensation, I am told, because again, I didn't use these on my face. I didn't feel that, just rubbing it on my hand but you can feel that, a lot of people report that. But as far as when you're rubbing it on, you have it on your finger pads and you're rubbing it on, it's not like you feel really those little spicules, which is why when I first opened this and you know popped it on my hand to show you the texture, I didn't realize it had those spicules in, in the product. I would just like to see more research. Come back 10, 15 years from now, I'm hopefully I'll still be doing YouTube videos at that point or, and you guys will hopefully still be watching, <laughs> probably not, but I could have a totally different mindset at that point. There could be more data and I can be, you know, raving about them all the more. So let, let me end with that. that. This is my opinion here and now as it stands, as far as where the limited to no research on these and long-term safety data lies but that could change in the future. I would really hope that, you know, long-term, maybe we have better safety studies. One day, maybe we will see more spicules being incorporated into topicals for delivery of medicinals. That would be great if they end up being effective. I, I'm not against them, but I do have serious reservations without long-term safety data. All right, y'all, that's what I have to say about this popular, trendy Korean skincare product. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.